Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. My name is Mariah and I'm a real estate agent in the beautiful state of Oregon. If you haven't already, definitely hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything. You can get lots of free real estate related content and we're just gonna jump right into the video. So today I'm doing a q and A. I'm just gonna go through your questions um, and, and my answers and read through them in my phone. So let's begin here. What area do you do business in? So our office is in Salem. However, we do business everywhere in the Willamette Valley, basically. So um, a lot of business in the Corvallis, Albany area, which is uh, south of Salem. We also do business the opposite direction, north of Salem, Woodburn, which is about about the same distance just north uh, Kaiser of course most of our business is in Salem but we do work up to about an hour um, an hour away from Salem and anywhere in the Willamette Valley so if you know anyone moving to those areas send them our way and we will definitely give you a referral fee if you're a realtor what does the call look like when you're calling once a week and in this question this uh, this gal is referring to a, my video where I was talking about um, how I go on preview appointments for for sale by owners and then I continue to follow up every week um, and that's my method of prospecting to them instead of being pushy that kind of thing okay so when what does the call look like when you're calling for sale by owners to check in once a week just reading the seller and touching base quickly or are there any specific topics you talk about on call one then call two etc thanks for all the help no I don't have any specific formula topic script that I use I literally just call them to check in it's a very short phone call for the most part when I check in with these fizzbos normally it goes something like this hey it's Mariah remember me haha <laughs> whatever um so how how'd the weekend go how was your open house how's how'd the week go with your selling process or i'll say um is your home sold yet or you know whatever i'll just ask them a question like that and then i uh, just say hey just wanted to make sure you have everything you need and hang up it's very short phone call and the point is because i'm not trying to convert them over the phone it's a long-term um process with the way that i convert these fizzbos and so um, and, and sometimes it's not a short phone call. Normally it's very short. They don't want to talk to you. Sometimes though, it is a longer phone call and they'll just want to talk and that's okay. I just let them talk and just listen. And sometimes it does lead to talking about listing and talking about that as a possibility. Um, and sometimes we do go there over the phone, but the point of the call is just to check in make sure they have everything you need they need see how their week went see how the selling process is going that type of thing and a lot of times i do end up leaving voicemails for these calls instead of um actually speaking with them because they don't answer i don't know how for sale by owners expect to sell their home but so many of them do not answer the phone it's insane if realtors didn't answer the phone we wouldn't sell any homes either so yeah so i sometimes do leave voicemails but um for the most part when i do reach them it's normally a quick simple to the point call no formulas okay hi mariah can you share what you normally say to the fizzbo when you first initially meet them i know you don't have a script but if you can just give us an idea i would really appreciate it so what I say when I door knock a for sale by owner that I've never met before, I show up at their door and I just say, hi, my name's Mariah, I'm with Berkshire Hathaway. Just wanted to stop by really quick to introduce myself as a local resource. So if you have any questions throughout your selling process, feel free to give me a call anytime. That's it, that's my spiel. Normally they shut the door and I leave. Sometimes they invite me in, sometimes we have a conversation. Um, you never know what you're gonna get. <laughs> for sale by owners are like a box of chocolates. Hey, I'm really interested in getting into the real estate business. I'm currently a full-time marketing professional and afraid to make the jump into a totally new career. How do you know if it's for you? My first piece of advice, by the way, um, even though you didn't really ask for it, if you're jumping into this from a different career, I would definitely say to have a good amount of money saved up to live off of like more than you normally do um and expect to not get paid for 
say six months just because you know it's gonna take a while to get your very first listing even if you're super ambitious and you get it right away once you get that listing you're gonna have to wait to get an offer on the listing and once you get an accepted offer you're gonna have to wait to close and so um it takes a while to build up that consistent steady income where you have consistent you know things in escrow consistently and you're never dry basically so definitely save up and prepare yourself in that way as far as knowing if it's for you goes um there's so many free work resources online i mean watch more of my videos watch other realtors videos and find out what it actually is that we do on the day to day and then truly and honestly ask yourself are those really things that i want to do like am i down to do those things it actually takes to get business when you're starting out because i see a lot of realtors come into the business who uh they love the idea of real estate they love the idea of making your own schedule and posting pictures of pretty houses and you know running a business and all of this stuff but then they didn't really think about the fact that you know in order to get business especially if you're young when you're first starting out you're gonna have to cold call you're gonna have to do things that you maybe don't want to do and so actually have a realistic talk with yourself and decide if that's something you're willing to do or not and um if you're willing to stick with it and um it's the kind of thing you just have to do as much research as you can and um, if you feel in your gut after that that it's still the right decision then just jump in and you know what do you have to lose if you if it ends up not working out the skills that you gained from attempting to be a successful realtor and from going to real estate school those are things that you can take and plug into um, whatever is next whatever it is that you're supposed to be doing if, if it's not this what are your typical work hours? Do you work every weekend? Uh, it depends on the day. Every day is totally different. I normally have about one day a week where I'm gone from like morning, like early morning to night. But um, other than that, I work for, I'd say about four to five hours in a work day, tops. Some days more. Um, I normally don't work weekends. And if I do work weekends, I just go on one appointment maybe two appointments on you know say a Saturday and then I have the rest of my day to do whatever I want uh, it's really hard to calculate how many hours of work you actually do in our job because our life and our job are kind of meshed up as one which I love but it makes it a little hard to actually say how many hours you work because you know I could be shopping in Portland with my mom and sister and taking calls for clients or getting you know having taking calls about a listing and scheduling things and uh, scheduling an inspection all while I'm doing that and I don't consider that working because I'm not in the office or on appointments but I guess I am still working because I'm getting the same stuff done it's just you can do it anywhere so um but that being said I uh, definitely work less than most realtors I know that are doing well and um, I think that the reason is because I really have been very intentional about working smarter not harder and having balance in life is super important to me um, and you know as long as the way I see it is as long as my business is consistently growing, it's not stagnant, but it's still growing, then I'm okay. Um, I'm not worried if it's not growing, you know, maybe it could be growing faster, but I'm not really willing to sacrifice my life. As long as it's growing and I'm making a comfortable amount of money and I'm enjoying my life, that's really what matters the most to me. Um, I always want to keep making more, if that makes sense, and keep growing my business at a consistent rate. Um, but I don't think you have to work yourself to death in order to do that. So it's okay. really difficult, like I said, um, to calculate how much you actually work in this business because, you know, say I'm at a party and I'm talking to, to three different people at this party about real estate. Um, that I believe that's prospecting, but I definitely don't count that as working or work hours. So it's, it's really tough to, to say. Um, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on that in the comments below. If anyone watching, if you guys are realtors, I'd love to hear, you know, what, what you guys say, have to say about that and how your work days are and how many hours you guys work a week and what you think about the whole work-life balance thing and, and whatnot. 
I heard that real estate agents have to do door-to-door marketing and cold calling. I personally don't like being pushy and wouldn't want my potential clients to think of me as a sleazy salesperson. How can I be successful without door-to-door door knocking and cold calling or is it required? Follow-up question. If it isn't required, what can I do to get leads and clients without door-to-door not door-to-door and cold calling? My response was Nothing is required because you are your own business owner and nobody can tell you what you have to do as a realtor. Also, door knocking and cold calling definitely doesn't make you sleazy. It can, yes, but it doesn't have to if your heart is in the right spot. Because honestly, the people you're calling, and I believe this wholeheartedly when I call for sale by owners, the people um, that you're calling need your services. And there's nothing wrong with making calls and connections after all. This is a relationship business. If those approaches aren't for you, there are so many other ways to get clients. You can focus on adding value to people you know, getting out there in your community and meeting more people so you can get referrals or farming a neighborhood, sending mailers, social media marketing, making videos like these, just to name a few. Um, I hope that answers your question. Um, I, to, to me, the most obvious, fastest, best way to get business when you're brand new is cold calling expired listings and for sale by owners and I don't think I I absolutely don't think that's being sleazy because the way I see it is those people need me just because I've seen it so many times where I've actually helped them um, be in a better situation and I know that they need our help statistically we know it so I don't think it's sleazy but if that's not your style um, you know you'll find something else that is I have a quick question I'm a 22 year old newer agent in central texas i was wondering about how you find leads when you're first starting out did you use a phone book how do you know who to call lead generations cost hundreds or thousands please help okay i've never used a phone box a phone a phone box <laughs> my goodness <sighs> i've never used a phone book and I have never paid a single penny to buy um, for sale by owner or expired leads, that kind of thing. I've never, never done that before. So you don't have to spend all that money when you're starting out. Um, uh, um, and then, oh, she asks, okay. And then to clarify and follow up question, she says by leads, I mean buyer leads. That changes the whole question. Um, I honestly don't really do much to try to get buyer leads. For the most part, I only work with buyers when it is a past client referral from you guys on YouTube or referral from Facebook, agent to agent referral, referral from someone I know, basically, or someone that I know. Basically, I only work with buyers when I know 100% they're working with me, I'm not working open houses, I'm not working Zillow leads or whatever other ways there are to get random ass buyers. I'm not doing that because I don't want to be like, it's not my business model to chase these flaky buyers that are not a hundred percent with me, if that makes sense. So for the most part, um, 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 or when one of my sellers is buying, you know, we'll, we'll do that too. I definitely recommend focusing on listings when you get into the business, because if you list you last and you have way more control over your time that way, I think that's another reason why, uh, I feel like I, for how much production we do, we really don't work that much at all. And I feel like it's because one of the main reasons is because we're like 99%, like we're so many listings compared to buyers and I think that helps a ton because we have control over our time way less time consuming you make more working with sellers and you work a lot less hours for them um ma, 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 ma. I have put on a first time home buyer class before trying to get buyer leads when I was brand new in the business. Um, but most of the buyers who came to my class were around my age. So they were like 18 too. And none of them were ready to buy a house anytime soon. So it didn't really turn into anything. I pretty much find all my leads from Craigslist. I go to Craigslist and look up homes for sale by owner. So sorry that didn't really help you with buyer leads. Um, as far as buyers go, I mean, social media go hard on Facebook let people know you're in the business be consistent but then again that's that's not a quick solution that is more of a long-term thing getting leads from 
people you know, your friends on Facebook, that kind of thing. And those can be great buyer leads. Okay, next question. I get a bit scared on the follow-up process. They get mad I keep calling without a buyer. One kept pushing me away and hung up on me. Now he has his home listed, listed with another agent. WTF. My response was, that is the worst when you see them list with someone else. But I would just say keep finding more Fizmos to call and improving your skills as, as you go and it'll get better. He probably just wasn't the right seller for you and you guys just weren't a right fit. Um, that happens to me sometimes still and it definitely can be frustrating, but um, you know, it just happens. On to the next lead, on to the next Fizbo. Hey Mariah, I'm a new realtor. I've been, been at it for about four months and your videos are such a help. I was wondering how you like Berkshire Hathaway. There's one local and I'd like to join, but I've heard the commission split is decently high. My meeting is on Monday. I thought I'd get some insight from an actual agent. I'm not currently, I'm currently at Central Century 21 and not into it. Oh no. Okay, I hope I respond in time for, or responded in time for your meeting. I think I didn't, but anyways, I hope it went well. Um, so my thoughts on that. So when I was going to first got my real estate license, I interviewed um, at a lot of different brokerages and I knew already I wanted to work at Berkshire Hathaway. I knew from the second I heard about them, um, I just, I don't know, like intuition. I just knew I was like, that's where I'm supposed to be. No doubt about it. I didn't really know anything about them or know why I thought that, but I just knew that's where I was supposed to be. But I still interviewed everywhere because it's a big decision. I knew once I hung my license somewhere, I don't want to be hopping around, wasting time and money. I want to be somewhere long term. So I interviewed so many different places, big agencies, small agencies, and everything in between. And one of the things that I really, really liked about Berkshire Hathaway was the fact that statistically, the agents at Berkshire Hathaway sell more than other agents in other uh, companies. And so I thought, like, I want to be surrounded by the best. So why would I want to go anywhere else than where statistically, you know, the agents that are selling the most are, that's who I want to be around and that's who I want to learn from and be in the office with. And um, not only that, but the way I see it is, yes, you do start out with a little bit higher of a commission split than some of the other companies. However, uh, if you're planning on being a successful agent, then that shouldn't matter at all because once, you know, give it a year or two and you're gonna be in a great commission split because that commission split is in favor of the agents that are doing the the best, the top producers, if that makes sense. So if you're, if you go into agency, you're going to start out with a crappy commission split, but you can work your way to a super awesome commission split that is better or the same or whatever, no worse at all than any of these other brokerages. And on top of that, I say this all the time, but I feel like I have a personal assistant then and I don't working at Berkshire Hathaway because literally all the things I talk to other agents that do have assistants and the things that their assistants do for them that at this point I would be paying someone else to do Berkshire Hathaway does for us um, the ladies at the front desk in the office take care of so just the fact that you have all of the support the training I mean your time is money you don't want to be wasting your time doing these little tasks you don't have to do um, and also not to mention the fact that Berkshire Hathaway has top notch training. Um, it's just a great company. So I would say if you're in it for the long run and you plan on being successful, then you shouldn't worry about the commission split. Um, next question. Okay. Hello, um, I found you on YouTube. I was looking up day in the life of a real estate agent. I'm all the way in Maryland. I'm 20 and I had a daughter at 19. I know what my passion is. I'm in college at the University of Maryland and I don't want to be there anymore. What is your advice on studying for the exam and ways to truly get the information embedded into my heads? I really want to do this. I need all the help I can get. Your videos inspired me to do more. Hope this finds you well. Aw, good for you. I love that. I love that so much. You are going to do so well. So I guess um, I'm not going to say too much about this because I have a whole video I did a really, really long time ago where I shared my tips for passing the real estate exam and how I finally passed it because 
being 18, you know, a lot of it just went over my head and I took a few times to pass and it's just a hard test in general so i will put that in uh the description below i'll put a link to that video check it out but i will say uh prep agent check him out on youtube um his youtube videos helped me a ton uh i would just really um the weeks before i would take the test i would just have his videos playing constantly in the background whenever i was making something to eat doing my makeup driving doing anything i would just constantly have his agents or his agent his video prop agents videos playing in the background and that really drilled the questions and the answers into my head okay so i oh one one more quick question hey mariah um hope everything's going well i have a quick question for you in a few of your videos i've had you mention that you put their listing on 3,000 websites nationwide and globally. Do you ever have clients ask you for a list of these websites? Is it literally 3,000 websites? I appreciate all your videos. No, you have no idea. So helpful. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, so, wow, this video is getting really long. I need to cut it off. Okay, so um, I'm just going to make this really quick. So I... Mm, I think I've had like one person ask me before a really long time ago. Nobody else has even questioned it. Um, I'm pretty sure that our office provides uh, some sort of printout if I were to ask them that states um, the websites that we have it on, like all of them. But um, yes, it literally is 3,000 websites nationwide and globally. And just another uh, reason why Berkshire Hathaway is so awesome is because they have access, you know, they're a bigger company, they're a wealthy company. They have access to the marketing that other, um, other companies just don't have. So, I mean, I have listings that are on ESPN. If you look up your app, you'll see me and Spencer in our listing. And that's a service Berkshire Hathaway provides that I've never heard of a single other. I mean, maybe I'm sure there's other agencies that provide it, but I've never heard of it. So I know that they have more intense. Um, they have some really, um, lots of target marketing. I mean, they really have all the high tech stuff to help get your listing sold. And, um, yeah, I don't really know where I'm going with this, but anyways, I'm just going to cut this video off right here because it's just getting way too long. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to hit the like button if you got any, um, any value out of this video at all. And as always, I love hearing your comments, feedback, and questions in the comment section below. Can't wait to chat with you guys down there. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.